All right. I guess All right. Hey, how are you guys? I know that um, you're hopefully oh, well. ready for your panel. Um, we're just getting everybody segueing over from the previous talk. Again, I uh, just wanted to thank you for being here and especially a shout out to all of our sponsors, Equilibrium DeFi, uh, Talisman Wallet, Lucky Friday, and Parity Tech. They all made this event possible today. So, um, but I will leave this to you, the conversation about AMMs. I'm sure with a DeFi centered talk, it's going to be quite interesting. So I will get out of your way and allow you guys to just kind of explore and, and have a conversation amongst yourself as a panel. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Funky. Um, so welcome everyone to our panel. First of all, I want to also hone in on thanking the Equilibrium Talisman teams for organizing this event. I love how it's kind of becoming a tradition when our ecosystem comes together to share what they've been up to with their own projects, while also sharing these updates with the community for them to know what new projects and established ones are up to. So now getting into our panel today, which is called the future of AMMs on Polkadot. Let's go ahead and go around the room to introduce our panelists today. Uh, please introduce yourself shortly and a little bit of the project that you're working on. So we can start with Gleb. Thank you, Nico. I just hope everyone can hear me. My name is Gleb. I'm one of the founders of Mangata. And what Mangata is doing is creating a DEX between the network to utilize the best of the summer ecosystem and bring all those benefits to all others out there. Thank you, Gleb. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Peter. Nice to meet you here. Uh, nice to meet you, Gleb. Nice to meet you, Nika. I am a um, tech team manager from Equilibrium, and pretty much everything we have done and DEX related and non DEX related comes out of my mind with the help of our exceptional dev team. So I'm glad to be here, and hopefully, this panel is going to be interesting. Yeah. Awesome, guys. It's a pleasure to have you. So definitely you're going to have uh, two different perspectives from the ecosystem. Um, and since the panel is about DEXs, we can start by defining a DEX, right? And I would say the fundamental function of any DEX out there since the exception of the UNI-V1 is to exchange from one token into the other in a permissionless matter and taking the middleman out of the center. But each DEX kind of optimizes two different use cases or different factors, right? So if you can go a little bit more into detail on what factor you guys wanted to optimize when you decided to build the decks that you're currently building. We can start with Mangata. Thank you, Nico. I really uh, like how you summarize it about removing the middleman, and that's exactly what we are doing. And our approach is to provide experience as close as possible to centralized exchange, which is mm -hmm. users are familiar with and already glad to use. And all the features they are able to see on a centralized exchange, like different networks, different tokens, no paying for placing an order or taking an order just for executing it, uh, is what we are going to mimic. That is why we are trying to introduce no gas and MEV prevention. Because, you know, removing the middleman is not only about removing someone who benefits from your trades, it's also removing someone who control it. And sometimes that control, not even malicious per se, can be done in to create losses for the trader to benefit from their trades. In real fiat worlds, in centralized exchanges of securities, they, we have laws, we have regulations which were established years ago, dozens of years ago, to prevent brokers, so middlemen and that scheme, to maliciously benefit on users. But we are not there yet with centralized exchanges, and we are aiming to provide that security to the user without taking away their comfort. So that is our mission. Awesome, Gleb. Thank awesome. you for that. Peter? Yeah, pretty much uh, what we were focusing on uh, is the same thing just Gleb just said about, but uh, we also wanted to provide like an exceptional UI uh, because and make it decentralized, of course. And uh, one of the main reasons we chose Polkadot and Substrate is uh, due to the speed and because uh, it kind of helps to solve this blockchain trilemma. Uh, and 
to provide an exceptional usability where pretty much you can fit like up to thousand uh, orders or transactions within one block. And uh, so uh, not kind of beat current uh, centralized exchanges, but at least try to approach them as much as possible. And uh, uh, that's why we've built like uh, fully order book based decks, uh, both in Genshiro in Kusama and in Equilibrium as well. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and just honing in on that point that that you mentioned, Peter, about Polkadot, that's another commonality that that you both have besides building a DEX. Um, so I wanted to dive a, dive a little bit deeper into that. Uh, why did you guys choose Polkadot to build your projects? Once again, start with Mangata. Thank you, Nico. That may be my one very favorite question, and there are two reasons. Why is one is more technical because originally I'm a technical guy and the substrate as a, as a framework provide us an automated tooling to alter not only not to only bring our own business logic to the network, like, you know, just smart contracts. It also allow us to alter how blocks are produced and executed. Mm -hmm. And we are utilizing it heavily in our MEV mitigation mechanism. So very simply said, it's not possible with any other framework. But actually, and now speaking non-technically, there are one more and probably even more important reason why we choose dot summer ecosystem and not substrate per se. And that is because of application specific focus of the ecosystem, mm -hmm. because it brings very substantial difference compared to smart contract based ecosystems, because with smart contracts, everyone compete for the same block space for the same computational resources. And in our application specific world, we are free of that competition. That means very simple thing. We are free to cooperate, not to compete with each other. That's awesome. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, well, pretty much I already mentioned the trilemma thing where you have security on one side, decentralization on the other side and scalability on uh, the third side, I would say, and uh, Substrate offers a great technology where it pretty much solves the security issue for you. Uh, the, the, the decentralization is also taken care of and uh, it offers a great scalability and, uh, well, at least uh, on a standalone level, and that's where we actually tried and experimented with the DEX in Kusama, uh, where the blocks were six seconds length uh, and as I already said, we could fit like literally a thousand transactions into the block that had offered a pretty good user experience for the users who actually went and traded there. Um, so yeah, and uh, pretty much we didn't find such a performance anywhere else. That's why we decided to stick with Polkadot and the ecosystem in general. And uh, last but not least, as uh, Gleb mentioned, yeah, since uh, pretty much uh, this paradigm of blockchain of blockchains that exists in Polkadot, it allows you to easily access uh, all of the different projects, all of the different tokens and uh, allow users to have this one stop shop where you can pretty much trade anything just like on an, any regular centralized exchange. Awesome. And Peter, I think you're, you you read my question because I did want to go into the interoperability feature of Polkadot and how you're building with that in mind. Um, Gleb, I'll let you take this over, but you can obviously take XCM as an example. I know Mangata has super cool XCM use cases that you can probably talk about, but talking about previous panels where they're having uh, pair chains that are outward facing and inward facing, I, I know also Mangata has interesting interesting things to say there. So in terms of interoperability, what are your projects working on? Uh, exactly, as you mentioned, there are two directions. One, as you mentioned, is inward thinking, so focusing on our native .sum ecosystem. Because ultimately, from the very first principles, we one of the .summer projects, we are substrate project, and then no other blockchain is closer to us than ours connected to the same finality mechanism, others which can use XCM communication seamlessly. And that is why our first 
and very important partners are other projects from the ecosystem. So from the very simple uh, examples, so just listing tokens on Mangata or mm -hmm. bootstrapping liqu liquidity on Mangata through Mangata bootstrapping mechanism, so what's more complex examples? Because XAM is not only about transferring tokens from one place to another, it's about creating more complex automatized ecosystem. So uh, the very first and very good idea, which came from Oak Network, from Turing Network, about how can we use our technologies together is auto compounding. Because besides traders, every AMM have liquidity providers who, was there, who have their own motives, their own benefits, and the very basic action most of them are doing are auto compounding of their rewards which is not so simple with uh, technology which does not support time triggers or event triggers and that is what is provided to us by Turing network in case of Kusama or Oak network and it was like a natural fit of technology of two ecosystems and XCM messaging to facilitate that marriage so one of the examples which our liquidity providers can enjoy is auto compounding. But at the same time, interoperability does not stop in .summer ecosystem. Just because we are using different framework or different language does not mean we cannot connect different ecosystems. And that is why now we are also aiming towards more users or more value which is out there in different ecosystems. And as an example of that is connecting to Ethereum as a full-fledged rollup. So for Ethereum users who want to participate in, that, in those substrate and dot sum of benefits, we will be able to provide them with that without them actually leaving their ecosystem. And if we will decide to make that leap of faith to full Polkadot or Dotsama ecosystem, we will be able to facilitate it within on-chain mechanism. So it's like a duality. If you want to see it like as, as a native Dotsama parachain, that one vision of it. And if you want to see it as Ethereum roll-up, that another aspect of it. And users are even encouraged to move between those two. Awesome. Peter? Yeah, um, well, I completely agree, agree with Gleb, but one particular example I would like to point out, and especially which relates to our system, and that is why we're really waiting for XCM v3 on Polkadot, is uh, because we're really interested in uh, multi-hop. Because, for example, if you transfer DOT tokens from Polkadot uh, to Equilibrium, and then do something there. And uh, we have this notion of insurers and uh, they pretty much safeguard the system and uh, get all of the liquidated debt. And so they need to go somewhere and to actually swap these dots or the liabilities they get for those dots uh, if they want to um, make some money while insuring the system. And uh, that is where multi-hop comes into play because uh, we would love to see um, options like you know dot coming in from polkadot and then going to any other decks uh or amm which is support uh, which exists in the ecosystem be that aster moonbeam mangata uh whatever and so we want to provide users with options so uh to simplify their user experience their insurance experience and make it like a top-notch product yeah Awesome. And Peter, uh, am I understand it correctly, what bounty hop functionality even more beneficial for older book based systems, because because of that, you will be able to build different type of financial derivatives on top of the system. Exactly. Yes. Without building it yourself, but relying to different ecosystem different mechanisms which exist into ecosystems. So users will get the benefits of options and futures uh, via your product and utilizing XAMV3 functionality. Exactly, yeah. And that's the great thing about XCM, right? That it's completely unopinionated and once it's out into production, now people like yourself start kind of taking it in and see what you can do with it. And that's how you get, you make my job much easier 
because every time that I'm talking, me as a DeFi lead, talking to external parties looking to join the ecosystem, instead of me explaining what XCM and interoperability is, I use use cases like the one with Mangara and, and Oak or the one with the Killer BM using Moonbeam to bridge in assets into their, into their chain. So keep on doing that because you make my, my job a lot easier. Uh, but changing gears a little bit. One thing that we can all agree is that DEXs live and die by their liquidity that they attract. So how are you guys thinking about attracting liquidity in the most sustainable way? We can start with Gleb again. Oh, I would like us to start with Peter because we started with me two times in a row. Yes, so... you're right. Let's go with Peter. Thank you. Well, this is a really hard question, you know. Um, it's uh, You have to think through carefully for all of the aspects of your protocol, and that includes the tokenomics and how mm -hmm. you employ you know liquidity farming and how you don't just give out your tokens so uh it's uh not in any sustainable fashion like we see uh, pretty frequently in the DeFi, and we were thinking uh a lot about that we had some our solutions which not might be the best ones out there on the market but uh i wouldn't get much technical here but pretty much what i think is most important is somehow to organize uh, the protocol owned liquidity where you don't have this rogue liquidity which comes in to you know farm and then just leaves and uh, then um, if you're a DEX you have to incentivize both the traders and the liquidity providers and with traders and can be different contests uh, rewarding them for making a uh, turnover or volume on your decks or even paying them the rebates and uh, uh, having uh, or those rebates could depend on uh, the time they lock their liquidity within your uh, decks or your system. So there are like numerous options and uh, you have to be creative here. Yeah, because it's a very competitive space and uh, so you gotta always look around, see what other people are doing, and then try to pick out the best stuff. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, you just you know go ahead and try another stuff. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, I don't go. agree more with Peter, and definitely we are very familiar with the challenges you mentioned with you know the incentivization game we need to play to ensure right actors getting the right rewards but answering the question about attracting or bootstrapping as you called it nico liquidity i would like again to split it into two different uh, ways two different mechanisms one is how to make some value or some token settle on your decks and for that, we do have the bootstrapping mechanism and every new bootstrap which is happening on Mangata is usually a big event and users are participating, especially when it is a price discovery event. So new tokens without any fixed price are brought into a DAX and everyone are encouraged to establish the price which they believe is fair for the token. And also, even if it is not a price discovery mechanism, it's still fun and interesting as any limited time events for users. So now we're working on democratizing bootstrappings for future tokens on Mangata. So on one side, we want to allow as many bootstraps as possible, but at the other hand, we want them to be as quality as possible. So we cannot just say, hey, everyone bring any tokens you want and do any bootstrap you want, because it can even hurt incentives, hurt interest of our partners. Imagine someone is doing bootstrapping of, well, let's say ETH on Mangata, just out of nowhere and putting just one ETH to do a bootstrapping, yeah. it will be not fun for anyone and that's no longer available for anyone. But the other side of attracting liquidity or settling liquidity on a DAX is allowing tokens which users are already fond of, which users are already holding and loving. And from a certain point on, they will realize they can do more. I really like how 
Alex on the previous panel told about doing more with Bitcoins, and we are going to provide that more to other ecosystems too. That is why we so much value tokens of our partners from Lotsam ecosystem. And that is why we are reaching out towards the Ethereum ecosystem. There's so much loved value awaiting for new possibilities, for new operations and actions could be done with that. Awesome. Awesome. We're just down to time. So thank you very much, guys, for, for the panel. Uh, great insights that you share. I'll welcome Funky right next to the, to the panel so we can open maybe the, the floor to questions, or I think we don't have enough time for the next, for the next panel. Yes. Uh, well, thank you guys for being here. This was a great talk. Um, and uh, we don't actually have any questions in the chat that came up, but um, really want to say thank you guys for participating. And it's a great panel and very informative. So thank you so much for being here and taking the time.